Yep, I I had to do this. Um, hey YouTubers, uh, Rob here with another 64 game, and it's Chase HQ. I recently got the sequel in a uh, in a pickup, and the sequel only quite a fun game. And I'm actually going to get to that uh, soon, but in terms of context, I thought I'd fire this up. So. The CG4 conversion to SSQ is probably one of the worst conversions from an arcade game on the machine. Um, you can see right now, like, the, the horrible monochromatic graphics, the poor frame rate, the average music. Um, fundamentally, what they did was they can, took the road code from the Spectrum version. Now, I've played a bit of the Spectrum on under emulation, and it's rather good conversion. Um, they really made it play control well, look good on the machine. It has all the, it has it has speech which the, which the arcade game of course had. Um, yeah, a lot of little details. And a lot of those just when the team who converted it really didn't do it, really didn't do this game justice. It's a fun arcade game and it's fun on like all the other computers. You know, the, the Amiga and ST got a really fun version. It's not it's not classic, but it's playable, it's pretty good, I, I liked it, and both the Spectrum and CPC got, Amstrad CPC got really nice versions. Meanwhile, us poor C64 owners got this. Um, so, as an upside, the first thing I could say is the loading is pretty quick. Um, a little, you know, once it loaded up, you know, the multi-load for levels is pretty fast, so we'll dive in. Pretty basic attract screen, standard, you know, joystick with, um, all right, so we'll dive in. And here's our briefing, so I'll let this run. You can skip it with fire, thankfully. Um, so if you haven't played Chase HQ, the idea is it's a road racer in the vein of, you know, Outrun or the likes, but rather than just cruising through stages to beat the checkpoints, you're actually going after uh, criminals. The idea is you need to catch up to a criminal, you have 60 seconds to catch up to the criminal, and a further 60 seconds to ram him off the road, or her. To ram them off the road, so get the briefing here. And one of the dis one of the things here is on the arcade machine. This is all most of this is speech, but you also get the little cast sprite of what you're supposed to ram. Here on the 64 version, it you can sort of tell there's actually five cast sprites, one for each stage, and you can use those. So brief example: we're on the road, and the controls horribly sluggish, and we lose the music for this this horrible sound. So, the car, I think, to be honest, I think the player's car doesn't look too bad, being a Porsche 928, and that, I think, was would have been converted off art draw for the 16-bit. Yeah, a little blocky, but it looks, looks pretty decent. The other cars, I think, look a bit bland. Yeah, it's like, they've got the road engine running from the Spectrum, and they've overlaid the Commodore native sprites on it. Um... So as we can see, you know, along the top of the screen, those three little fan icons are your turbos. You you start with three on each stage and quick key, quick press of the space bar to use them. And it's basically a temporary speed boost. In the top right of the corner, you'll see some digits appear as you... Ugh, I always hate these, these turns because the, the car driving is just... It just doesn't feel right. Um, and as you pass a car, you'll see a bonus appear there. You lose that. It's like a you know, combo. If you grab into another car, you'll lose that. Um, down the left, the when you uh, yeah when you've approached the target, you'll see a damage meter appear there. It fills up as you hit them. On the right, there's sort of a distance meter, which is just a visual way of representing the the distance below. That green bar, of course, is you know where you're where your messages and stuff come through. Most of that's just really... Other than the briefing, that's yeah, basically super fleshless. Um, to be honest, I actually prefer the speech clips, but we probably don't have RAM for it. Then you've got your score, your time, your speed, distance to the car, and then your gear. So, coming up. So, I mean, the challenge is sort of, you know, you've got to be really tight on the roads. If you try to steer in a direction too long on a corner, you will skid out. Um, but yeah, there's, yeah, there's not much to say for this first phase. They go through, 
know, this case where, you know, up oh, 15 seconds, yeah, we get the, uh, your time will soon run out warning. Um, but it doesn't really, it's sort of like atmosphere, it doesn't really add to it, just, you know, the sound, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of, I, 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 I try to, uh, as I said, I have memories of this game and they're bad memories. And there we are, here's the target. You do get the little arrow, which is nice. So, we'll use our first turbo. And the skill is really like... Try to time the hit in such a way that you can do model hits at once. But, the fact is... The, the sluggishness of everything, like the frame rate the, for the road, really takes a lot of the fun out of this game away. You, know, you look at it on an arcade. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you can search YouTube and find arcade footage or footage from like the 16 bits or any other the platforms that came on. You can just see there's so much more speed. I mean, I wish you know, I wish in terms of <laughs> someone else had actually done this conversion for Ocean instead. Um, Actually, I actually don't know who did it because there, there's no credits. Um, and I would say I'd look at the manual, but this is one of the few. Uh, this is, I think, the only game I've ever taken back to a shop um, for being so bad. <laughs> so yeah, we got to be careful. That's one of the things. I mean, you get weird things like the physics. You know, when you're, I guess you call them physics. When you drive around, um, like the turn. Yeah, the, the off-ramp, the, the fork. You could see where I was having to turn into the road, like, you know, the opposite direction of the turn for the sake of trying to keep myself on the road, and that feels really weird. Oh, we've always got this, this driver. there. So the... One more. <laughs> One more. But yeah, I just sit here and I just think, we could have had a good version of this game, and this been in the hands of, of the right people, and sadly, the team that did this... I would love to know more. I, I really would love to know more about the story of why they did it like this. But we've taken the first criminal out, he's been arrested, and we just get the text. So, the presentation is just, it's, it's, a, it's disappointing. Um, you know, on the arcade game, the little cutscene, oh, you know, with that, as all this happens. Here we just get text over the game screen, and we go load the next level in. It's, it's, I, I, I look at this and just think, yeah, this is one of the most disappointing games I've played on the machine. Um, I can't even get into, I can't even get angry over it. I'm just disappointed, and disappointed so much. Now we're loading level 2, and the loading's reasonably quick. Here we are. Same kind of deal. And we, this time it's the yellow car we have to get for. <laughs> like, yeah, you know. So, I won't, I won't. But there's just so many little details cut from this. Um... On this stage, yeah, if you watch the arcade machine, when you get to the turn off here, there's an actual helicopter that comes down and and tells you we spotted him, we spotted the the driver going left. Here, you just get the. Oops, so I've just rammed some civilian traffic. There goes my combo. Um, yeah, you get this. You get the helicopter who arrives, you know, arrives in the scene, says, and tells you, you know, they turned left, and then you turn left, and here it's. You just get the arrow. It's. I'm gonna do this and see how far I can get. Back in the day, I used to be able to get to the last stage, which is probably where one of the game's greatest cardinal sins happened. Um. So you know, being an arcade game, you have your you have a couple of continues when you when you run out of time. Uh, well, when you get to the fifth stage, it wouldn't let you use a continue. So I could get to I could get to the final stage on one, you know, on, with, with one credit, 
and get to that last stage and it wouldn't let me use them, it would go game over. It's... I mean, it's bad enough that if you have time on the clock left when you reach the criminal, you don't get the 60 seconds out of the extended time, it's just reset. And that's really annoying. It's like, why can't, if I have 10 seconds on the clock because I drove well, why can't I use that? But that's an original arcade game design decision. That's one that I personally don't like. I think that, I think the time you get from actually getting to the car early, that's the car for level five. Um, if you get to the suspect early, the time you have left should be at, should be added as a bonus. This level one car, you you find it. There are six car sprites in this game: the player's car and a car for each, and the the criminal for each stage. The blue one, I believe, is level four. I I, I you know my humor is not the fast and fury improv improv you know improv you know not a, not a big improv humor kind of person. And that red car is level three. <laughs> um. So I'm trying to make this a little more interesting, but yeah, this is, I mean, I, I think, you know, this is, I mean, it is from that era. This was, uh, Ocean, the game, the, the original arcade game was 1988, Ocean's conversion was 1989. And by then, you know, you look at other games like, you know, you look at Power Drift, Turbo Outrun, you know, these are the other major, major arcade conversions that came out from that time. And... You know, Power Drift squeezed 20, 25 circuits into a single load. Tour Outrun had amazing presentation and the, mo and the one of the worst loaders ever. Um, I was lucky to have that on disc. I feel sorry for anyone who hasn't who has Turbo Outrun cassette. Um, and then you have this, and it's just. I mean, who wouldn't want to, you know, partake in, you know, in a good cop crime fantasy and pretend to, you know, ram vehicles of criminal scum? And it's just, it's just done so horribly. I mean, so yeah, this is one of those trips. Sometimes, you know, you go through an old game and you find a classic that you never played. Or you find that, you know, one of your favourites stands up after 20 years. And sometimes you find games that are worse than you remember. Biggest, you know, games that you thought were disappointments back in the day, you just get reminded that they certainly were disappointments. And by far, Chaser 2 is one of the biggest I think I've played in, the, in, you know, in either of the, you know, in any of the gameplay videos I've done over the last few months. This is probably one of the biggest disappointments. I will give it something. I do like the the uh, the, the light bar on top of the screen there. Uh, you know, flashing as you as you are uh, as once you you know you get in range of the of the tar of the suspect. I do like that. So, I'll... ah, curses. I do like that, but that's about it. Oh well, that's stage two done. Again, it. Again, you know, a game like this really relies on the presentation, and it really, really relies on the speed. And this game just doesn't have either. This conversion just doesn't have either. And so, yeah, it's, it is just that bad. But I'm going to see if I can get to the last stage. I've never finished this back in the day because of that, that uh, problem with the, with the, with the, you know, not being able to use continues. But even if you do use a continue, the game is just so unfair as all the damage is gone. You don't get your turbos re- I don't believe you get your turbos reset. So you'd have to wait. You'd have to, you know, catch up. And then by the time you start, they've already gotten some distance away. So you, you have even less time. So yeah, there's a lot of just uh, ugly design with this game. I mean, it makes me wonder. I mean, 
you look at the the other eight bits, right? The Spectrum and CPC shared the same processor. They both uh, used the the Z80. The Amiga and Atari ST used the same processor. The the Motorola 68000. The C64 was the only, you know, of the five main computers in the you know that would that would be there in the marketplace in you know in U, in the UK in that period. It was the only one that had that used the the, the different chip, the 6502. And while a lot of older systems that used it, um, I think that it was like well, probably wasn't worth the hassle. Even though the CC4 was still one of the was still the more probably the more popular machine at the time, with the eight bits at least, you know, sixteen bit. You know, I think 89 was roughly the period when when the Amiga started overtaking the ST because the, uh, you know, the, A5, the Amiga 500 brought the price down. Um, you know, the, that's why the Atari ST got early ground and why a lot of Amiga owners had to, to do with uh, conversions from the ST was because the ST was cheaper. You know, being in a, in a home, in a form factor that was more appropriate for the home. For the first two years of the of the, the Amiga's life, so the ST was in that that you know one unit keyboard form factor, and the Amiga wasn't until 1987 when the 500 shipped. Um, and like 1989, 1990 was really when you know there was enough Amiga penetration that it was worth doing proper Amiga versions of games. But even then, I like I said played this on the Amiga the Amiga version. When I was younger as well, and it was like. That was a good, it was a decent enough conversion. It wasn't a classic, but it definitely felt better. It, it was a lot, it was enjoyable. I, I always enjoyed it on the Amiga. But that's then, I haven't, uh, I wonder if I should fire up an Amiga emulator and see, but, well, that's another story for another time, I guess, whether I decide to do a series on that. Who knows? But yeah, I, I love the phrase, if you keep messing around, your time is going to run out. Your time will soon run out. It's like, I'm not messing around. I'm going as fast as I can. You know, I didn't crash. It's, there's sort of this, like, attitude of the game, where it just, like, everything feels really, really tight in terms of your time limits, in terms of, you know, in terms of the road design. And it's one of these things that is ultimately like the probably the biggest disappointment I have with the game. Is just Yeah. That's that thing where if you're not careful you will skid out. I mean, I'm surprised at how high this car can go off the road sometimes when you when you go over a hill. I mean, I don't even think. Yeah, I really got to use my turbos here. All right. So you can see that, you know, I love that I was in mid air where I still did damage. So close. Ah, stage three is complete. The pain will soon be over. The pain will soon be over, viewers.
I don't know how to change your gear seems to just it cause, you know, 20 or, or so mile. I don't know if that's miles or kilometers. Uh, speed increase. The stage four, the blue car. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the purpose of that multi really is probably just loading a few strings of text. You know, the road graphics for the, for the new stage. We probably why it loads so fast is just so little data. I mean, truth be told, the, the, ah, that's where you, you know, if you hold steer too long, you get into that problem. Truth be told, I think the best bit of art for this game is the loading screen on the cassette version. Maybe I have to do a, do an, uh, you know, put that in as a, as a quick thing that you see in the corner or something. I don't know. Maybe show it at the end or something as a fade out. But that is probably... Uh, I really see... I really hate trying to take these forward because... Because just the car handling is so weird. That it makes, you know, if you screw up like that... Yeah, I was, I was stopped for like maybe five seconds as a result. And hitting like three or four poles repeatedly. And when you have a game that's uh, aggressively tight with its timelines as this is you can see what the problem is. Yeah, so the idea we're doing is you want to sort of, sort of almost tap for some of the larger corners. Well, 100 units away, we got 10 seconds. Should be okay. I'm still surprised at how high that car can jump when it, on the hills. Oh, I've wasted that turbo, but I think it's going to be a close call if I get past this stage. <laughs> I can just imagine people, you know, you, I can imagine you watching this and thinking, don't make it, don't make it so it's over. And I can completely sympathise. Thank you. 
Oh there, the computer cheated. But D, that car just drove completely through size without any slowdown. What kind of madness is this? Ah. Well, sadly, there we go. We still have... We still have another stage to play. Question is... Oh, I didn't even realize until now the the your doesn't even have the apostrophe in it. So it's, so it's bad enough that it's just text. It's bad enough it's not even spelt correctly. Uh, do the disappointments never stop with this game? Do they ever? Well, the last stage it is. Let's load that in. <laughs> Won't be long until now. We are at. We read, um, we can, we can, uh, all right, now this is the one that's a spy, but yeah, decided, I just like, you saw the briefing the first stage, I don't think you need to see the rest. Stage 2 was like armed robbery, stage 3 was drugs, stage 4 was a kidnapping, this guy is a spy and it's espionage. And this is the one where, like I was saying earlier, um, you have three credits, if you get to the, if you can't apprehend him, you know, so you run out of time, you have no chance to continue. I'm really not a fan of that design in games, and I don't know whether that was something inherited from the original arcade game. Um, if it was, that's cheap design. I mean, I would have thought that would have left you, you go through it and, you know, put quarters in and get someone else to try and, you know, get you to put quarters in so you could beat it and then someone else could go to the machine. Ugh. Yeah, I really... Uh, the driving just frustrates me. And it should. This game should be high-octane road action with, like, nice colourful graphics and sounds, some great music. And, you know, get that thrill of, you know, the cop car chase and it's just like, it's not there. I think I've said that so many times in this review, in this in this play, but whatever. This game is rubbish. Avoid at all costs. At least for the Commodore. If you really want to play it, I think I think the best deal is just try and find somewhere that's got the cabinet, if there is even any in operation after all this time. I mean as a consolation prize, I think the sixteen bit versions are still okay. I'm I'm going by memory. I haven't fired up, you know, an Amiga or ST emulator to try them out lately. Um, my gut feeling is that the Spectrum and the CPC versions are also pretty nice. You know, but again, I've only played those on emulated Spectrums and CPCs. Um, so I could be completely wrong and, you know, having bad, bad diluted memories there. Um, so, but the Spectrum version, but I've seen people talking about the Spectrum and CPC versions that pretty much say lots of great things about them. So I don't think my memory is wrong there. So I mean, really, if it was choice between playing this on the C64 and not playing it all, not playing it at all is the better option. You know, as the as the Whopper send more games, sometimes, you know, the only winning move is not to play. You know. Take solace from, you know, my ramblings over this and just like accept that, you know, this game should not be played. It should be ideally it should be cast into some sort of pit of eternal damnation for games. But alas, that is not going to be the case. I'm to be careful on this on this stage because the corners are hard. Good, it's almost something from the uh, Wake of Mines problem where the, the obstacles are too close to the side to the side of the road. You see the massage around the corners? The high performance sports car, that doesn't make much sense. Ah. 
I am not gonna. I am. Something else I do have to give it. I do have to give it some brownie points for. I don't think I ever saw any flicker. No sprite. Like, maybe it's because it's just so slow that there was enough CPU time to to do everything. But I don't think there was any. You know, no no glitches or anything. Which I have to give it some brownie points for that. But on the other hand, it makes me sad because it makes me think the programming team knew what they were doing when they decided to do this game the way they did. Well, 25 seconds and we're a little over halfway damage. Let's see if we can do it. We're not going to do it now. Oh well. I pretty much warned you that was going to be the case. And that's the worst path, is when you're that close. Is when you're that close to apprehending him and you run out of time. Oh! Had it been able to steer, I could have done another, another hit. Well, there we are. The clock run out. See, normally at that point you get asked to continue. And you get the countdown timer. Wow. Thanks for insulting me, Chase HQ. Such a terrible game. Wow. I should be proud of that. You basically just insulted me, game. Yeah, so Chase HQ. Rubbish beyond all means. I think... I mean, I've played other terrible arcade conversions. And I don't think it's that... Like, I don't... I honestly don't think C64 Outrun is as bad as a lot of people think it is. Um, I may get to that eventually. I didn't like Afterburner much, but it was better than but it was better than this. Um, Double Dragon is the only one I think of that's worse. But this has to be maybe the second worst conversion I think I've seen on the machine. I don't know. Maybe that's a top ten video for some time. <laughs> anyway, if you're still here, thank you for for, for watching this. Thank you. I know that, like I said, it's a terrible game, and I probably wasn't the most exciting commentary on it. But thank you for watching. Again, thank you to everyone who subscribed. Um, hopefully this was entertaining in some way. Um, and, you know, if you haven't already subscribed for more videos of uh, more, com more C64 games, good. Most of them are a lot better than this. Um, if not, uh, I look forward to bringing you a better game next time. Well, I think, as I said, I'm actually this is a precursor to the sequel, and the sequel is certainly a much better game, and that'll be on the, that'll be the next one. Thanks again for watching.